years ago, I took a paleontology course, I think is the correct name for it, senior level course, a long time ago for teaching certification. And I asked the professor, how much actual evidence, how, uh, like fossil evidence do we have for human transitional life forms? And it was just a private class, me and him. And he said, well, not really much. I'm wondering in the time since I took that class to now, are there like hundreds of possible, you know, hundreds of transitional forms that are supposed to come into human beings? Has that now been, uh, you know, shown up? Do we have large masses of stuff that we can look at? Have you heard of um, Australopithecus sediba? I have not. So when you asked your professor that question, there was no, there's, this sediba wasn't around. Correct. So this is Lee Berger, the p famous from South Africa, paleoanthropologist. Uh, he said, look, I've got two specimens of these, two, and they were also from jumbled bone pits. And, um, uh, and so look, it's a transitional because it's got partly human, it's partly ape. And then follow-on uh, researchers came on, and, and then within five years, they debunked every um, attribute as being either ape or human. And so what I did is, uh, in conjunction with the, co the authors of our book, Contested Bones, who listed every quote, relevant quote from all these follow-on papers that looked at the same fossils mm -hmm. uh, and compared them to known apes and known humans and said, this part is ape, this part is human. We compiled that to make this map, and you could see the result. They put an ape skull with an ape jaw with an ape forearm, and way down here, they added a human finger bone to it. So ape, 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 but then this human part, they've pretended like it belongs. This, this ver vertebra, they pretend like it belongs but it was in a jumbled pit of bones. Mm -hmm. And it turns out that this, what they're calling as transitional, they, they called it uh, a mosaic. Um, and, and then, but they, but it's, not, it's not actually connected. So anyway, it, it ends up being a, another example of this category where you have a mixture of human and ape parts. Mm -hmm. so, that, so, so that's my conclusion on that one. And it turns out that the scientist who did that was playing fast and loose with the truth. So we get to knock her out. And then... Um, Homo naledi is another one that your prof wouldn't, wouldn't have known about. The no, I, I have heard of that one. Okay, so that's on display, or was. There's a big display down in the Perot Museum downtown, so I went and took a look at that. And um, scientists make these big claims about it, that it's, you know, becoming human. And um, so there's Naledi's um, uh, hands, bones, and there's, there's my photo of Naledi's hand and arm. Mm -hmm. It's very human-like. In fact, it's very human-like. Uh, and then follow-on papers, since he published, Lee Berger published on Naledi, follow-on papers in um, Journal of Human Evolution have compared its pelvis and found out that it's just a tiny pelvis, human pelvis. Brain size and shape exactly matches a small human brain size and shape, looking at the inner cast of the skull. Right. Uh, and then, of course, human hand. So human, 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 human. And it looks... It, it's a human, not a transition starting to, Exactly. So okay. I, instead of almost human, I just call it totally human. It's just a small human right. on that one. So those are some that he wouldn't have said. But again, these additional examples fit into the same categories that, that they always seem to fit into. It's either a dead animal, a dead human, mm -hmm. or it's a mixture of, of the two. And that's what we keep seeing over and over again. Okay. Thank sorry, you very much. Sorry for over-answering your question. No, that, but thank you for letting me show all my extra slides. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.